Welcome to Worksheet 6. This should be a fairly quick one. We're going to review the UT clauses, so all of the different, uh, I don't know, I would say all of them, but a lot of the different situations where you will have a um, UT clause with the subjunctive, uh, particularly these three, okay, that can sometimes be uh, missed, right? They can sometimes be mixed up. First thing I'll say is that ut, right, can be used with the indicative. So if you ever see ut with an indicative verb, ignore everything that you see on this worksheet. It basically just means as. Um, but when it's with a subjunctive, we have these different clauses. So in general, like I said in class, ut clauses are noun clauses, right? In the sense that they fill in the some piece of information that the main clause is leading you to. So the best strategy for trying to figure out an ut clause is to translate, hey, Caitlin, best strategy is to try to translate the main clause first to give yourself some sense. <laughs> What's up, Michelle? Give yourself some sense of what is happening um, in the sentence. I think I marked this one as prose, but you guys are welcome to join. So translate the main clause first and then see if there's some, you know, missing piece of information that it, that it seems logical for the ut clause to fill in, right? So, hey, Chaz. <laughs> so purpose clauses, right? The main clause could be pretty much anything because any action can have a purpose. So there's no real specific vocabulary with this. So the example sentence we have here is kurumus. I love it. Kurumus is we run, right? We run for what purpose? Utwaleamus, so that we can be healthy in order to be well. So when it's purpose, you can translate it as in order to, you could just say to, uh, you could say so that. There are a couple different ways that you can do it. Result clauses always have a, uh, a so word. <laughs> it's good to see you, Chaz. Take it easy. Um, result clauses always have a so word. So uh, a word like uh, Tom, seek, ita. Uh, there's adeo, which also means like so much. Maybe a. It's, uh, it's got to have some word that, you know, triggers that result, right? So it's not just about running. It's about running so much that as a result, we are tired. We are exhausted. Indirect commands, okay? This is how you would relay somebody's ask or what somebody's ordering someone to do, what they're begging them to do. So what you're really looking for is the verb in the main clause, right? The main clause has to have some verb of asking or commanding. I'm asking you to do something. I'm begging you. I'm encouraging you. I can persuade you to do something, but there has to be some ask in the main clause. Those verbs often take um, different cases. So um, be on the lookout for a few, for instance, impero that takes the dative. Uh, she orders us ut. Diu puramus. She orders us to run for a long time. Another thing to note, whoever's being ordered is typically the one doing the second verb. So watch out for the verb endings because she is the subject of orders, but we are the subject of the clause. She orders us to run for a long time. We are going to run for a long time. So just watch out for that too. As always, we label and uh, and translate just to get a sense of what's going on in the entire sentence. So me amater in the nominative case, me accusative, and my verb uh, monuit, third person singular. We've got a ne here, which we, we're going to have some kind of a negative um, ut clause. Like I said, best thing to do is get the main clause correct. Me amater, me monuit. My mother warned me, advised me is another way you could do it. And right there, right, warned me, we're going to have uh, a particular kind of clause. So warn me not to escola de skaterem. So that's going to be first, uh, that's first singular imperfect subjunctive. It is imperfect because my main verb is in the past. She warned me not to leave school. Warned me to do it is like saying ordered me to do it, or in this case, not to. So that is 
an indirect command. Zoom in a little bit, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, there we go. All right, next sentence here, errant, at the beginning of a sentence, third plural, we'll talk about that uh, in just a moment. Because my verb is sum, excellent, Bia, excellent. I gotta be checking the chat too. My apologies, I didn't see that. Uh, sum always hangs out with uh, nominatives. And we have this little word here, tot, this little um, adjective. Right, it's indeclinable, but it is an adjective. And then we go into our ut clause. So again, always, always, always get the main clause first. Errant tot idificia. Nope. There were errant, particularly when it's at the beginning of a sentence like that, there were so many buildings, okay? When you put sum or, or probably est or sunt or errat or, you know, whatever, um, at the beginning, that's typically when you're looking to just establish a fact, right? There are, or in this case, there were so many buildings and that right there is all I needed to hear, right? This is definitely going to be a result clause. There were so many buildings that omnia, which could be nominative, could be accusative, but my verb ending here, posem, that means I am the subject, so this has to be the direct object. It's first singular, again, imperfect subjunctive because the main verb is in the past. There were so many buildings that I could not see them all. I could not see all of them. Omnia. Omnia being neuter because it's technically describing the idificia. There were so many neuter plural buildings that I could not see all the neuter plural buildings. Number three here, amicus. He's my nominative, eum, accusative, orawit, third, oops, third singular, perfect, getting a pattern here. Then I go into my ut clause, right? My amicus, or probably his amicus, because we're talking about eum, uh, his friend, orawit, um, I know it looks like orare, we would think maybe like speaking, but typically um, beg. His friend begged him, begged him, ut, begged him to. Keep him in the accusative case, and then trotto, third singular, again, imperfect subjunctive, which is very, very common. You often see um, these imperfect subjunctives, mainly because... A lot of the verbs that you are going to see in most of what you read are um, are going to be in the past tense. Not to bring it back, um, trotto. Trotto is to um, to hand over. All right, Bia, take it easy. Hand over his food. Please, 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 give me your food. So since he begged him to do it, that's an indirect command. Nice short one here for you, Edo, first person singular. And then we have our ut clause here, ut wiwam. Edo is the verb to eat, I eat. I'm not really seeing any vocabulary, right? A so word or a command or anything like that. So I eat ut wiwam, another first person singular. This one is present subjunctive because my main verb is in the present, right? So I eat, a couple different ways we could translate this. I eat in order to live. I eat so that I will stay alive or more simply, 
I eat to live. So this is a purpose clause. Number five, tantum kibum edimos. So this is my accusative direct object here. My verb is first plural this time. And then we go into our ut clause. So can't say this enough, right? Get the main clause first. Oops. That was weird. Uh, so tantum kibum edimus, we ate. Now, this is a weird verb because it's edo edera eighty. So long mark is going to tell me that it's past tense, right? We ate. The other thing that's going to tell me it's past tense is this verb over here. So because you can kind of work in reverse and say, well, if this one is past tense, right? This is imperfect. That's got to be past tense. We ate so much food. And that's all I needed to hear in terms of what kind of ut clause it is. We ate so much food that as a result, sex horas, which is accusative, moere non posemus, first plural, imperfect subjunctive. We ate so much food that six hours in the accusative case, remember that's duration of time, that for six hours, we couldn't move, or we couldn't move for six hours. Either one is good. And number six, which I believe, yep, that's the last one. Magister, my nominative. Discipulos, accusative. Hortator, third person singular looks passive but can't be passive um we have a direct object can't have a passive verb and have a direct object which means that this verb only looks passive it is deponent right so it's third singular present but it is active and we've got our ut clause over here so before we get to that our main clause The teacher, Hortar, uh, Hortari means to encourage, encourages his students. So because I'm encouraging you, that's making me think over here, indirect command, right? I encourage you to do something. Encourages them. Oot. Oh, this auto-corrected on me. I swear, I swear that's an auto-correct. That should say studeant. My apologies on your worksheet. It originally said studeant, and I got, I got auto-corrected. <laughs> so it is definitely subjunctive. The verb studeo takes the dative case, which is why multis rebus is in the uh, dative case. And then studeant, third plural. That is present subjunctive because I'm encouraging my students right now. And I'm encouraging them to studeo, literal meaning of studeo, devote yourself, right? It can also just mean to study. But he encourages his students to uh, devote themselves to many things. Studeo, Latin doesn't have reflexive verbs, but it's kind of that idea of throwing yourself into uh, a particular task. So studying means devoting yourself to whatever learning you're doing. Uh, and that leaves us with a, a quick little synopsis here, just to keep those muscles uh, working. So let me zoom out here a little bit. Ooh, I might have gotten all the boxes right this time. Let's see. Yeah, all right. So this one is first plural and masculine. Let me turn on my long marks here. First plural and masculine, first conjugation. Oh my God, so easy. Uh, rogamus and rogamur. Uh, rogabamus and rogabamur. And first conjugation, rogabimus and rogabimur.
It'll get cut off on the edges, but I think that's better. Uh, perfect. Active. We use third principal part. So, rogawimus, rogaweramus, and rogaweramus. Perfect passive. We use the fourth principal part. This is plural and masculine. So, rogati summa. Oops. Rogati sumus. Rogati eramus. Rogati eramus. The imperatives would be roga and rogata. Those are your present imperatives. The future ones, remember, we add the toe. Rogato and rogatota. Participles, uh, present active, so ro oops. Roga whoa, whoa, whoa. rogantes, right? those are people who are asking. You don't exist, you don't exist. Rogati, those are the people who've been asked. Rogaturi, those people who are finna ask, they're going to ask, they're about to ask. And rogandi are the people who must be asked a question. The gerund, we pick it up from rogare. So in the genitive, we have rogandi, rogando, rogandum, and rogando. Now make all of these bold. Boop. Rogandi, rogando, rogandum, rogando. So that's uh, asking, of asking, to or for asking, asking in the uh, accusative, typically that's with odd, so that's for the purpose of asking, and then in the ablative, whatever ablative, by asking. I learn a lot by asking questions. Rogando. Infinitives, we have rogare and rogari, right, or present, active, and passive. Rogawissa and rogati, or more commonly in the accusative, rogatos, essa, rogaturi, or more commonly in the accusative, rogaturos, essa. Again, the accusative endings, because it's typically an indirect statement, is where you would see those. And then rogatumiri, you're good. Subjunctives, which we talked about this week. So present subjunctive is about changing the vowels. Rogamos becomes rogemus. We swap the A's and E's. Rogemus and rogemur. Imperfect subjunctive is the second principal part plus the endings. So rogaremus and rogaremur. Anything perfect active, we start with the third principal part, rogav, right? And then we add erimus. Pluperfect, rogawissemus. And again, it's the infinitive, rogawissa, from up here, rogawissa, rogawissa, plus the ending. Just like imperfect is rogare, the infinitive rogare, plus the ending. And then perfect passive, we have ro Ga, oops, rogati simus and rogati essemus. And that will do it. So about 20 minutes. Getting too nice on you pros, kids. Too easy. Um, we will talk more about um, ut clauses, of course, as they come up in our stories. But we do have a quiz on these tomorrow. So I'll be in office hours today if you want to go over anything else. All right, guys, have a good one.